Welcome everybody. I am here with Anne Constantino. She is the CEO president of CRCC, formerly known as Children's Respite Care Center. Anne, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me to come on and visit. So I can't remember the last time we chatted. Um, it's been a little while, but, it has. but let's just, yeah, let's just first talk about um, CRCC. What is your mission? Who do you serve? So we have the privilege of um, serving kids, all kids of all abilities. So regardless of what the child is struggling with or what they bring to us, we meet them where they are. So we have kids that have special needs. We have neighborhood friends. We have peers in the classrooms. We really are an organization here to serve kids and families that might not otherwise have options in the community. Absolutely. And I think it's probably been two years, maybe, that when I visited your location, because you have two locations, correct? That is correct. You visited the one out on Q Street? Yes. Okay. So we have two locations. Yeah. That is our Southwest, and then our Northwest location is at about 88th and Blondo. Okay. Yeah. And, and, I, and I remember visiting that one years and years ago. Um, but I was just... I was just so impressed and inspired by everything that happens um, and, and the kids themselves and, and the staff. It was just amazing to watch. And I was so honored just to have kind of had the private tour of being able to see what you do and, and how you serve and the kids playing. And um, uh, but then COVID-19. Yes. Hit, so <laughs> you've had to do things a little bit differently. So kind of walk me through what what happened and what had to happen. Um, well, you know, it has impacted everyone in everything that we do. And so in March of last year, uh, we had to close our centers for the safety of our children and our staff. But we knew and we wanted to continue to be able to serve the children and the families in, uh, that we have every day. And so what we were able to do was we really kind of pivoted and deployed our staff into the homes of the families that needed our care to continue. So we sent our nurses and our teachers and our paras out into the homes yeah. to continue to provide that care in, um, in their environment. We also were able to transition our rehab therapy services, which include occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy, and feeding and swallowing therapy, as well as behavioral health. We transitioned all of those to telehealth so yeah. we could continue to provide those services to the kids in their homes as well. Yeah, because a lot of your kids too is they're they're having some hands-on um, care. I mean, it is necessary. Um, absolutely, absolutely. So, so you know, we were we were just doing some analysis of the diagnoses, and we have about two hundred and fifty unique diagnoses of the kids that wow. we serve. So when we hear or ask, we get asked the question, you know, what does your typical child look like? Well, we don't have one. You know, we really yeah. are here with um, the nurses in center and the teachers, the paras and all the therapists to be able to provide whatever needs the child has when they come to us. So one of the things when we were able to reopen uh, we have much more in, in place in terms of protocols and safety measures and all of that. And we were able to reopen in June to be able to welcome families back. But we still had several families that wanted to remain in home. And sure. so we were able to continue to accommodate those kids as well. Um, so just really being able to provide the services that the kids and the families need when they need it has been such a core value and mission, part of our mission. Yeah. So let me, um, okay, so let's talk about the, the preschool because you have a real, really unique preschool. So, um, well, how does that work? What, is it, what does that mean? Sure. So our Learning Together Preschool is something that we're really excited about. We were able to launch that in September of 2019. Okay. So we were operating that preschool uh, for a little while before COVID hit, but it's back in full force. 
And the reason it is unique is it's an integrated model of a preschool. So we hired a special education early childhood certified teacher, as well as a couple of early childhood certified teachers to be able to provide the high level of excellence in terms of early childhood education. But at the same time, we still are continuing to provide support with our nurses coming into the classrooms, our therapists coming into the classroom, and all kids from all abilities are learning together. And that has been such a beautiful model for all the kids that are there. You know, one of my favorite stories, which happened within about the first week of the preschool being opened, we had one of our neighborhood friends who doesn't have any um, special needs per se come after the first day of class and was talking to his mom and his mom relayed the story to us. So he, it was time for lunch and some of our kids do not, uh, receive their nutrition via mouth. So they have a feeding tube or a G button, that kind of thing. And so our little friend, um, neighborhood friend, was a little scared, to be honest with you. When the nurse came in and had the friend kind of at the table and was starting to prepare the feeding. And so our nurse took it upon herself to really use it as a teachable moment for all the kids to talk about how we all get our nutrition a little bit differently. Yeah. And, you know, he just gets his nutrition through this tube and really demonstrated the entire process for the whole class. So this little boy went home and said to his mom, mom, I have a superhero in my class. Wow. And she said, oh, I'm sure you have lots of superheroes in your class because these are three to five year olds, right? Yeah. And he said, no, my friend eats through his belly button and he is a superhero. And yeah. that story then became a conversation at their dinner table that night. And the brothers of this little guy um, were all interested in well, what, what do you mean? How does he eat through his belly button? Luckily, mom was a nurse and could explain it a little bit. Sure, sure. But suddenly it was not scary. It wasn't unusual yeah. it was just we all do things a little bit differently sorry that just like brings, that brings out like a happy tear to my eye um and so, yeah. yeah so that is really the core um mission of that program is the integration being something that is going to help all kids learn and grow and develop you know learning friendship and empathy yeah. and kindness and um understanding those are things that we, you know, frankly, we need more of in the world. And so if we can start with our little guys and gals um, at three years old, it, it really is, you know, I dream of a world that's going to be so inclusive and so welcoming yep. for all. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so tell, all right, so tell me again, what, what are the ages? Who do, three to five. Three to five. Three to um, five. And then what happens when they turn five or turn six? Right. So our integrated model is actually from birth or six weeks of age okay. to the age of five. So we have our friends in uh, each of those classrooms from birth to five okay. fully yeah. integrated. Uh, when the children turn six, many of the kids that we serve that have special needs go to school in an integrated classroom and our neighborhood friends obviously go to school as well so our school-based program that we have at crcc because we serve kids all the way up to the age of 21. okay our school age program a lot of the kids they've been in an integrated environment all day long you know we do have volunteers from some of the high schools that come in and kind of have buddies in our classrooms and things like that but it's not the same integrated model um, we are really excited because we've partnered with two different school districts this year for our preschool program, and we are serving the kids at CRCC for a full day of preschool okay. in partnership with the school districts. And so what that means is there's less transitions for kids. You know, they're not getting on a bus for half a day going to, um, you know, a public school down the street from their home. They're really staying with us the whole time. and. 
we're really proud of that because that recognizes the high level of excellence that we are providing in our early childhood programs at CRCC yeah. that the school districts really do want to partner with us and and limit the transitions obviously covid has made us all think of exposures you know it helps to sure. limit the exposures as well but that is a model that we're excited to be able to continue long past covid-19 yeah well, let's talk a little bit. So you've been around for 30 plus years. What, what, what was the anniversary? Because that was a year or two years ago? Right. So we opened in 1990. Okay. okay. So we, we were yeah, going so to have our big celebration last year. Right. Um, but obviously COVID happened. So we are doing our celebration again with our gala uh, this year in May to really kind of, again, celebrate our past, our history, and just where we're headed in the future. Yeah, and since, okay, so since we've talked, so since we're talking about the gala, we were talking before, you know, before we started recording, it's a little, it, it is, it's going to be different, obviously, so let's just talk about what, what's happening, and so people can save the date, and again, we'll have another conversation prior to, prior to it happening, but. So our gala is going to be held on May 15th. We are going to have a hybrid model of a gala this year, and it really is focused on the kids at CRCC. We are going to have a fashion show, a runway show, and the models of that fashion show are the kids that we serve. And we are really excited about that. We were obviously hoping to have everyone walk the runway at a, a live event. Sure. We are not going to do that because that's not going to be safe for the, the kids necessarily or the safest environment for them. So we're just going to record them walking down the runway. We'll show that that night. But we also are going to have the opportunity for participants to have their own, um, what we're calling a virtual experience within their own COVID bubble. bubble. Yeah. So people can buy a table and put together their own table with their own social bubble that they've created during COVID-19, participate fully. We will have a live auction, we'll have silent auction, We'll have Raise the Paddle, all kinds of great things that you would normally see at a live event. So you'll see them both live and virtually. So yeah. we would invite anyone to check that out. Uh, we'd love everyone to join us for either in person or virtually. It'd be great to see everybody. Yeah. And again, like I said, so that's May 15th, but we will definitely have another conversation um, as the event gets closer. So we're just getting close to, um, running out of time. Uh, let's just talk, how can people get involved? I mean, how can people contribute um, to you today? Thanks for asking that question because I think now more than ever, we really are looking for people to support us in lots of different ways. We obviously COVID with COVID has hit us pretty hard. Uh, we've had to increase our budgets when it comes to our supplies, the PPE supplies, our cleaning and disinfecting and just our new protocols that we have in place have, those obviously were not budgeted for. So there's always an opportunity to support from uh, a monetary standpoint. We also have an Amazon wish list out there. So if you have people that want to contribute items, you know, we are always looking for supplies for our classrooms, anything from rocking chairs, for our infant rooms to art supplies, you know, yeah. and construction paper. So that's another great way to be able to get involved. And, you know, frankly, just learning more about CRCC and helping to share who we are with their people and their, and their connections, because we never anticipate, none of our families ever anticipated needing to have specialized care. Yeah for their child. And so, but it, it happens. And whether we have that experience as a parent or we know people that need that kind of service, just knowing that we're here, knowing that we can help provide the supports to help their children learn and grow and develop and maximize their potential, that is a great way for people to be involved with CRCC as well. Okay, wonderful. Well, give us the website. Sure, it's crccomaha.org. And you can, again, go on to Amazon and we've got our Amazon Smile is another great way for people yeah. to support. And we're all buying a lot from Amazon right now. So if you yes. pick 
Children's Respite Care Center as the charity that you'd like to support, we do get some dollars that come back to us as an organization for that. So, okay. all right. Well, Ann, thank you so much. It's so good to see you. Um, it's good to, yeah, just, you know, again, I always love just catching up and learning more. And especially right now during these different, you know, these, these, I don't, they're just different times. So, different. yep. So I look forward to seeing you back here before your event. Great. Well, thanks for the invitation. It's great to yep. see you. Yep. You too. And we'll talk later. All right. Take care. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.